Yeah, my name is Jae Hyuk Kwak, uh, working at the Argo National Lab, uh, Performance Engineering Group at ALCF. Um, I'm going to talk about quick start on APASC uh, computing resources. Uh, Ray briefly mentioned uh, what kind of resources we have during APASC next two, e two weeks. Uh, I will give you a little bit more details and some uh, very quick uh, hands-on. Uh, we don't do computation. We just uh, log in and build very simple hello world problem and then just run it. So this is a list of uh, available resource uh, for AppPask. Uh, ALCF system, we have a uh, Thaler system, which is uh, Intel G5 processor, KNL-based system. It's uh, pretty old, but it's still very powerful. And uh, we have a Cooley system, which is x86 CPU plus KX, uh, K80 uh, NVIDIA GPU system. Uh, it was uh, originally for visualization process, and it is also used for training, like at PASC. So it's a nice resource to test it out. And uh, last one is uh, Theta GPU system, which is x86 CPU plus uh, NVIDIA A100 GPU, uh, one of the powerful GPU at the moment. Uh, this is uh, one of the partition of the Theta, so <coughs> we call the Theta GPU, and we will use this uh, resource uh, for at PASC uh, for the next two weeks. Uh, as Ray mentioned, uh, we also have uh, OSF system, uh, which is Ascent. Uh, it has uh, IBM Power9 processor plus uh, six B100 GPUs. Uh, in terms of architecture, it's exactly the same as uh, Summit system, but it's a smaller uh, Rax, so we can use for uh, training, uh, like this event. And, and uh, from NERSC, uh, we are going to have uh, Perlmutter, uh, x86 plus NVIDIA 100 GPU system. And uh, I heard uh, some of your session will use this permuter with the reservation. Uh, as Ray mentioned, we also have the cloud-based resource. So uh, we have three uh, uh, cloud, uh, cloud uh, resource for tool stack. Uh, so first one is NVIDIA cloud GPU resource. And second one is Intel Dev Cloud. So we have Intel system, Theta, but uh, we don't have Intel GPU system uh, at ALCF yet, so uh, Intel tool speaker will use the Intel Tab Cloud as uh, for the hands-on for its Intel GPU. And last one is AMD Accelerator Cloud AAC system. Again, uh, NVIDIA GPU become one of the major GPU in the HPC community, but we don't have resource yet for this training, so. AMD speaker for tool stack will use AAC uh, cloud. So this page is about DOE leadership computing facility. So Ray gave us, uh, gave us a very nice uh, introduction. So this is a collabor collaboratory multi-lab DOE SC initiative ranked top national priority in facilities for future of science 20 years of outlook. Our mission is to provide the computational and data science resource required to solve the most important science and engineering problems in the world, the problems you want to solve in the future. And uh, SCF has very uh, competitive uh, user allocation program uh, called uh, NSITE and ALCC. So we don't plan to have a lot of users. So um, uh, we instead, we want to have uh, selected very powerful users. So the project in the LCF team, LCF system, will have 100 times more resource than other general resource. So they can just focus on with very big scale. And LCF center partners with users to enable science and engineering breakthrough with Viajong at ALC, OLCF and the Catalyst at ALCF. Uh, this is a quick list of LCF computing facility system. So on the left-hand side, you see the uh, Argon uh, ALCF system. So as I mentioned, the Fader is one of our production system now. So we have around more than 4,000 nodes, Intel, KML, night, uh, night landing uh, CPU node. And its uh, maximum performance is around uh, 11, a little bit more than 11 petaflop. And recently, we just launch, we launched uh, the, another HP system, the Polaris. And each compute node is uh, 560 node, and each node has one AMD Milan processor, CPU plus four NVIDIA A100 GPUs. 
So overall, we have more than 1,700 AMD Milan Core and more than 2,000 uh, A100 GPUs. So each node has 512 uh, DDR4 memory, and on GPU, we have uh, in total 160 gigabyte uh, HBM2 memory. Uh, per GPU, we have a 40 gigabyte HBM2 memory. So if you use HBM2 memory on GPU efficiently, you can have uh, maximum uh, performance on, on the GPU. And each node has 1.6 terabyte SSD. And its uh, maximum uh, peak performance is uh, 44 petaflop per second. The next one is uh, HP system and Aurora in 2022. So we have a part of Aurora system in the machine room and uh, we plan to finish it up uh, by end of this year. And the node architecture is, um, each node has uh, Intel Geon Sapphire Rapid processor and the Intel uh, Pontavecchio GPU. So I believe uh, tomorrow you're gonna have uh, a detailed uh, talk from uh, Servesh, so you can see more details over there. So its target is uh, exascale. Sustained performance will be more than exascale. So if you have a really big problem, really interesting problem, uh, once Aurora is open, you can use the entire machine through the inside of our ASCC project, and then you can make a really interesting discovery in the science. Uh, OLCF system, uh, we have uh, IBM uh, Summit system, which is uh, one of the powerful GPU system uh, at the moment. Uh, it has more than 4,000 compute nodes, and the node architecture is the same as Ascent. Uh, so two Power9 processor plus six NVIDIA V100 GPU. And uh, overall uh, number of GPU is more than 27,000. And uh, each node, it has 512 DDR4 memory and 64 HBM2 memory. And I believe six, uh, 16 HBM2 memory per GPU. And each node has uh, 1.6 terabyte MBM uh, storage. And its uh, theoretical peak is uh, 200 teraflop. And Oak Ridge recently um, uh, start. I mean, Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge recently deployed uh, the uh, the first exascale system. So you guys probably see uh, the, on the top 500 list, Frontier is a rank one system at the moment. It's more than one exaflop. So HP, Frontier is not open to general user yet, but it will be um, soon. <laughs> And its uh, node architecture is AMD uh, Milan CPU, I guess, and then AMD uh, uh, MI250X GPUs. And its uh, sustained performance is uh, more than exascale. So tomorrow, I think uh, one of the OLCF speakers will talk about the Summit system and the uh, Frontier system. So if you guys have any question, you can uh, talk with, uh, with him. So this is a little bit more details about ASF system. So again, the failure is Cray XC40 uh, system, uh, more than 4,000 KNL node. And one of the partition of uh, failure is Theta GPU, which is uh, 24 uh, NVIDIA DGX A100 boxes. And each uh, node, compute node, Theta GPU node has two AMD ROM processor and eight A100 uh, GPUs. Uh, the total DDR4 memory is one, one terabyte. Last one is Cooley for visualization and the data analysis. Uh, this is Cray CS system. We have 126 nodes, and each node has uh, two Geon Haswell processor. It's pretty old, but pretty strong. And NVIDIA K80 uh, graphic uh, GPU uh, processor with a 24 gigabyte memory. And on the node, it has uh, 384 gigabyte DDR4 memory. So data serves a bridge between Mira. Mira was the previous research computing uh, system, and then Aurora is a coming exoskeleton system. So it's kind of a bridge between them. And uh, again, it's kind of repetition, right? So uh, let me quickly move on. Uh, it has uh, uh, Cray Aries uh, high, high speed internet uh, interconnect in the, the uh, uh, Dragonfly topology, and it has a rooster pie system. Uh, which is, uh, the throughput is uh, around 200 gigabyte per second. Uh, on the file system, you can see the home directory, which is under home. And we have a pretty tight uh, quarter for the home directory. So uh, we, re we don't recommend save a lot of things on the home directory. So we uh, uh, recommend to save uh, very uh, crucial things, for example, some source code or some very crucial input, something like that. 
because uh, this home directory will be uh, is, is backed up. So if something happens, we can we can uh, restore your data. If you wanna, uh, if you need more space, uh, we uh, recommend to use a project directory. So the directory location is uh, the grand. And uh, for the app task, we have uh, our own uh, project uh, space, which is uh, grand and project and app task 2022. So I will give you more details, but uh, under here, we have USR folder. And under USR folder, you can create your, uh, your space with your username. And then you can just save uh, everything, uh, whatever you want over there, right? Uh, it, uh, it has a pretty high quarter, so you probably you won't fill the entire quarter. But the problem is uh, project directory is not backed up, so you may lose. Yeah, actually, practically, I, I never lose anything from project. But uh, theoretically, you may lose your data in the project. So something important, you say you use your home directory. And for your uh, simulation, you can use the project space, OK? And again, this is a rooster file system. So if you want to have a higher uh, uh, I/O bandwidth, uh, you you had better use a stripe width. So multiple stripe stripe uh, stri stripe width uh, increase your uh, I/O bandwidth. So yeah, if you have any question, uh, you can just speak up, okay? So I can stop and talk with you. We have, uh, I mean, one and a half hour. So. Uh, OK, so on the Theta system, and also Theta GPU system, uh, we use the module. So if you, if, you, if you have used the ICF system, you probably be familiar with the module. So a module is a tool for managing user environment. So if you load module, uh, you don't need to specify your path or area library path or some other uh, uh, things, right? So you can just load module, and then you can use that. So module command, uh, you can just use module help. It will help you how to use it. And module list shows uh, what kind of modules are loaded at the moment. And module avail, it will show what kind of other available modules for your uh, environment. And module load and unload, this is to load and unload, right? And then switch and use. Use this for module pass and uh, module show, provide more details about the specific module. So we will uh, try it out together uh, later in the hands-on session. Uh, Theta is a uh, Cray system, and the Cray system usually uh, use a Cray wrapper, compiler wrapper. So uh, in this system, we provide the several different uh, compilers. So uh, we have Intel compiler, Cray compiler, and GNU compiler, and Clang compiler. So depending on your experience, you may have some preferred uh, compiler, right? Somebody, some, someone like GNU, somebody, someone like Intel, someone like Clang, Clang right? So uh, if you have your preferred uh, compiler, you can just uh, swap your module, and then you can load uh, that specific module. For example, PRGMB Intel represent Intel compiler, PRGMB Cray represent Cray compiler, and GNU, something like that, right? So once you load your module, you need to use compiler, uh, Cray compiler wrapper. So here you can see the underscore uh, CC, that represents your C compiler. And uppercase uh, CC represents C++ compiler and FTN represent your Fortran compiler. So you should not use MPI CC or MPI F77, et cetera. So it won't work, OK? So instead of that, you need to use uh, underscore CC, uppercase CC, or FTN, OK? And again, here, in order to select a, a compiler, uh, instead of using different uh, compiler name, you need to swap your module or unload and load uh, the modules, OK? So here. The PRGMB Intel is your default uh, module. So if you just log in, your default uh, program language, uh, program model is Intel. If you want to use Cray, you can just swap to the Cray or GNU, uh, swap from Intel to GNU, and for Clang, uh, Intel from LLVM. Okay. Uh, this is a, a, a quick example of a JavaScript on the theater uh, system. So here, the Cobalt is a job schedule. So uh, you need to specify any uh, additional items after Cobalt, and then the, your scheduler will understand what you want to do, OK? So here, Cobalt-T10, T is time, right? So it means you are requesting 10 minutes with this JavaScript. And Cobalt-N2 means uh, it requests two compute nodes, OK? So if you 
dash n2 on theta GPU, you mean that you want to use two DGX box or theta GPU. On the theta, you're requesting two KNL nodes, right? And dash A is for projects. So here, you may, have, you may already have uh, the ASCF uh, project, but you don't need to use uh, that your research project. For this training, we have APASC 2022 project. So you can always use APASC 2022 for project name. And then this is a uh, basic uh, job ID and part name and, and uh, job size. And here, in order to run your application, instead of MPI run and MPI EXEC, you have to use app run. Because previously we used a uh, uh, create compile wrapper, right? And then the app run is only a uh, job launcher, I mean application launcher on theta system. So instead of MPI run, you have to use app run. And then dash n and these additional details I will talk about in the next page. So app run is uh, the command uh, to start your parallel execution, okay? Instead of MPI run and MPI EXEC, you have to use app run. And after app run, we have uh, several options. So dash n, uh, lowercase n, uh, means uh, total number of ranks, right? So if you use two theta GPU, basically you have uh, 64 uh, physical core per KNL. So if you request uh, two theta, theta, I mean, sorry, theta, if you request two theta, which means that you have a maximum 128 physical cores, right? That means you can launch, you may launch 128 MPI ranks, right? So after dash lowercase n, you need to specify uh, the, the number of MPI ranks. And dash n uppercase, that is uh, number of MPI rank per node, okay? So uh, if you set uh, dash n 32 for two kernel node, you have a lot of remaining uh, core, right? And then if you set the dash uppercase dash n 16, which means 16 MPI ranks goes to first node, and next 16 goes to second node, okay? And then you may use OpenMP thread on the CPU to utilize all the cores, right? And dash D is, uh, dash D depths, this is number of uh, CPU per rank, right? So if you wanna use uh, multiple OpenMP thread, you may wanna request multiple uh, CPU cores per rank, right? In this case, we need to put dash D and something, right? So usually, if you want to use uh, a six MPI, a six open MP thread per MPI rank, uh, you can dash, uh, put the dash D in six, right? And dash CC depth, this is a uh, uh, kind of keyword, you can, you can always use it. And dash J uh, hyper thread, this is uh, how many hyper thread you, you are going to use per compute core. So in KNL system, you can use up to four hyper thread per core. But depending on your workload, you had better use one hyperthread core or maybe four hyperthread core may be best, right? Depend it, this is, it, that, that depends on your uh, workload. So uh, for this setting, uh, you can specify how many hyperthread you are going to use per CPU core. And this is the uh, OpenMP setting. So dash EMP, OpenMP, OpenMP uh, thread, or dash KMP apparently, uh, this is an uh, additional setting to specify your OpenMP setting. So you, you're gonna have more details uh, on the open session on Tuesday, I believe. Okay, so how we submit the Cobalt job? So you need to use the QSub command under your login node. So QSub and dash A project. So our project name is APASC 2022, right? So you need to say dash A APASC 2022. And then dash Q, this is a, uh, Something you need to understand now, you have to understand now. So we have some default queue, which means uh, theta system has default queue. Uh, but default queue require at least 128 minimum uh, job size. So, so if you use our theta system for your production later after app pass, you need to know, uh, you need to use default queue. However, at the app pass, during the app pass, uh, Ray uh, uh, set up the reservation for our training. So in this case, you can use uh, the queue name specified by the reservation, right? So at APASC, uh, of course, on the theta, we have reservation, we are gonna have reservation named uh, APASC 2022. So if you see, uh, once you check your reservation is active, if you use uh, dash queue APASC 2022, 
you will get the node uh, quick, quicker than others, okay? So because we have uh, some small pool, I mean, re reservation, and you don't need to compete with other general users of data, right? So you can use that, and dash t is the time uh, in minutes, so two hour, I mean, 128, right? And dash n, uh, uh, this is number of nodes, and then you need to submit the JavaScript, right? So this is the example. And again, uh, in the JavaScript, we already had uh, the cobalt and dash t something, right? So if your JavaScript already have information about your requested time duration or number of nodes, you can just skip that, okay? So yeah, this is a, uh, yeah. And also, uh, sometimes uh, you may see, uh, okay, reservation will uh, end soon, sometimes, right? In this case, uh, you, won't, uh, you, you won't be able to use your reservation. In that case, you may just use uh, this uh, debug queue, which is dash Q, uh, debug, dash cache, dash quad. So we have a small set of nodes uh, for this uh, debug queue. So uh, if you don't have, if, if you don't see any reservation in the system, you may see you may use this debug queue for your quick test. Okay. So I believe you will ask ask us a lot about this queue because uh, you will fail. Probably you will fail uh, get you know, to get some some um, some node. But uh, yeah, just feel free to let us know and we can help you out very quickly. Okay, so after submitting your job, you want to know, you want to monitor what's going on, right? So you want to see uh, your job is launched or your job is in the queue or your job is killed or your job is running, right? So for that, queue stack command uh, will be useful. So you can just set the queue set dash u and your username and you will see all the list of uh, your job which is in the queue or running. So once it's done, it will be gone, right? And Q step, and if you remember the specific job ID, if you can set this uh, Q step job ID and Q step dash FL job ID will give you more detailed information. So when you start and when you be done, right? And may and frequently after submitting the job, we realize, oh, I submit the wrong job, right? Or my com I missed uh, some environment variable, etc. Right? In this case, you can use Q del and then job ID, and then you can just kill the job. And show res, this is uh, uh, one of the important uh, command line uh, to use the reservation. So on the login node, if you type show rest, it shows all the reservation available, right? So you will see a lot of, uh, I mean, I mean, you, be, you, you will see a, a list of reservation for next two weeks because we already set the reservation. So uh, by using that, you can check how many time you have in that reservation, and then you can request uh, some uh, some possible uh, uh, time duration for with that reservation, right? And again, uh, you can, you, if you type the main queue stat, you will have uh, more options. Okay, you don't save, right? Okay, if you have any question, let me know. We can stop and talk about it. So, Cobalt is our job scheduler, and uh, once you submit your job. Uh, Cobalt create uh, the three files, uh, fi files with your job, okay? Uh, it usually uh, use job ID, but if you have some preferred uh, uh, prefix, you can use q sub dash o and your prefix. So you may say q sub dash o, I'm amazing. So you will, Cobalt uh, will create the I'm amazing dot three files, okay? So first one is Cobalt log file. So prefix dot Cobalt log. This file uh, is created once you submit the job. So it has uh, some information about uh, your job. So when it's submitted and what is the Q sub command and run job, et cetera, right? Uh, but, and then uh, your job will start at some point. At that point, uh, your uh, Cobalt will create two uh, additional files, which is job at std err file, which is a standard error. So if you run your application on your screen, on your terminal, you will see a lot of uh, uh, the uh, information from your standard error and the standard output, right? So if you submit the job, you cannot see that output, right? Instead, Cobalt save uh, those information to this dot error file for the standard error and this dot output file for standard output. So you will see whatever you expect to see from your terminal, and you can see those information from these two files. 
And sometimes, uh, I personally prefer to use uh, the batched job because if you use batched job, just submit and then just forget about that and you can take coffee and then you can back and then check whether it's done or not, right? But sometimes, uh, batch job is not really convenient because if you want to debug something, you want to access your compute node directly and you want to try several things together, right? So in that situation, uh, you will you want to uh, you probably want to use interactive job, right? So how to in start interactive job? You just need to add dash i, right? So instead of q sub dash n dash 32 dash t 30, if you add dash i, uh, you s on your terminal you submit interactive job, and then the terminal is uh, uh, waiting until the interactive job is launching, right? So, but you're still competing with the batch job. So if you have a lot of uh, jobs in your uh, system, uh, you, will, you may need to wait maybe several hours, right? But in our case, we have FPASC with reservation, right? So since you have a reservation, if you use uh, reservation correctly, you probably get the node very quickly, right? So for example, uh, here, if you wanna, if you use, right now we have reservation, so if you wanna try, you can try it out. So Q sub dash i dash n1 and the 30, uh, 30 minutes, and then if you set the Q, uh, dash Q FS 22, 22 reservation and uh, your uh, project is FS 2022, you will get the job pretty soon, right, pretty quickly, maybe one or two minutes, right? And then uh, once, uh, once uh, the job started, you will see some, uh, some, some output from your terminal, and then you can use apron command to launch your pattern job. So apron and uh, with these details, and then you can run to your application, right? Then you can see what's going on over there. Uh, so sometimes uh, you submit the job and job is running, but sometimes it just crash, right, for some reason. It may be hardware issue, it may be your application issue, right? So anything is possible. At that point, uh, you probably wanna know where it stopped, right? So that could be a, the, the starting point for debugging your application, or maybe you can identify, oh, it was hardware issue. Your sy system admin said, oh, sorry, we had some issue on the system. So your problem is, okay, you can just relaunch it, right? So to get that information, uh, one of the effective tools is uh, ATP, abnormal termination processing tool. So in order, in order to use this tool, you need to set the, in, in your, bet, in your uh, job script or your interactive job mode, you need to set the ATP underscore enable is equal to one, which means you wanna get some information once your application is failed, you wanna get information from ATP, right? So if you enable it, you will automatically get that information. So on problem failure, uh, it will generate a merge stack backtrace tree in the file uh, with this name. And then if you use a stat view on the login node with that file, you will be able to see, oh, which kernel and which, 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 which kernel uh, your application crushes, okay? Uh, so in order to use ATP, uh, the only requirement is when you build your application, you need to load uh, the ATP module. So by the default, uh, your system already uh, load ATP module as your default. So if you didn't load ATP, your application is built with uh, ATP. So you don't need to worry about that, okay? But if you wanna be, uh, if you wanna check, you can just uh, uh, type the module list and then see the ATP is uh, loaded or not, right? And we also have other debugging tools. So stat, uh, snapshot, uh, also DDT. So uh, in, 2020, in 2020, Ray gave us a really nice uh, talk about how to use the uh, debugging tool on beta. So you can, if you want more detail, you can check this link, okay? So, are we good? Okay, okay this is, uh, again, uh, we are talking about really huge system, right? So maybe some systems peak performance is 11 petaflop, but that is very powerful once it was launched, right? It, which means your system is pretty big, right? So sometimes you may be curious, oh, how the system, entire system is used, right? So again, uh, LCF system, we wanna have uh, selected very powerful users, so we don't expect a lot of jobs on the system, but each job will be very big, right? So you may be interested in uh, how many jobs are launched right now and what's going on in the system, right? So if you click this link, this is a nice, uh, it provides a nice color map about uh, what kind of job is running, launching. So 
maybe it may be fun. So sometimes I see some presentations. So uh, some 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 research research group uh, use the entire system at the point, right? And then they just uh, make a snapshot of this one, and then they show, oh, we use. Uh, 95% uh, of the system, and that is kind of the bragging picture, right? So that can be uh, fun. So if you have a chance, just try it out. Uh, I didn't have a chance in that. Okay, so next one is the, uh, the Theta GPU system. Uh, Theta GPU is a uh, partition of the Theta system, is why we call Theta GPU. But this is not a, a crash system, so it's more like uh, the Linux based system. So again, uh, Theta GPU is composed of the 24 NVIDIA DGX uh, uh, A100 uh, node. So each node has AMD uh, ROM, CPU, uh, ROM CPU, two sockets of ROM CPU, and eight NVIDIA A100 GPU. So total we have 24 nodes. So uh, total number of GPU is 24 multiplied by uh, eight, so 192 GPUs, right? Pretty, uh, A100 is a pretty powerful GPU at the moment. So this is a still partition, but it is a pretty powerful system. And the total memory is 20 to 24 terabyte, and the total GPU memory is more than seven terabyte HBM2 memory. It's a very fast memory, so yeah. So this is a very powerful system. And on the Theta system, Theta GPU system, this is a partition of Theta. It does not have a direct login from outside. So in order to access Theta GPU partition, you need to first, first of all, you need to access to Theta system, and then you are, you will, uh, you will be on, your terminal is on the Theta login node, right? And then you need to type SSH Theta GPU SN1 or SN2. So we have two uh, login nodes for the Theta GPU. So on, once you are on the Theta login node, just SSH and Theta GPU SN1 or 2, and then you are, you are in the Theta GPU login node, right? And then you can submit the job and you can compile your applications. So we have a module command again. So uh, you, can, you can type the module list or module avail and then uh, you can pick uh, any uh, modules you want, right? So uh, my preference is uh, OpenMPI module for MPI and the MBHPC uh, module for the MB, uh, NVIDIA OpenMP compiler. And these two part is kind of a recommended setting for the dot bash RC on the Theta GPU login. So on the hands -on, at the hands-on, uh, I will share this screen again. So once you on the, your Theta GPU login, uh, we rec I recommend you to copy and paste uh, this one for the bash RC, and this, this is for bash profile, okay? This is basically to access uh, the outside to, uh, I mean, uh, once you, if you want to get some, uh, if you want to pull some key repository to your Theta GPU system, uh, you had better have this setting. Okay, oops. Okay, this is an example of the Theta uh, GPU JavaScript. It's pretty similar so because we are using Cobalt node, right? Uh, one difference is uh, this is not a Cray system though this is a partition of theta, it's not create system. So you don't have to use app run. Instead, instead you can use MPI run, right? And the another thing is uh, we have uh, two types of uh, queue during the app task because as I mentioned, each node has eight, A100 GPU, right? So maybe you don't, need to, you don't need to use entire eight GPUs, right? You may just need to one GPU, use one GPU, may, that may be enough, right? Uh, for this reason, we have two types of queue. So th uh, through the reservation, you can use a training dash GPU for, to get the entire uh, node with eight GPUs. But if you wanna just use one of the GPUs from the, from the node, you can just use a single dash GPU, right? So uh, I, I guess you probably, uh, it'll be easier to get a, a, a single GPU instead of the entire uh, node because we just have 24 nodes, right? So, yeah, but it's up to you. You can try both of them. So uh, in order to submit the job, you can just use the queue sub dash n1 and the 30 minute can be 60 minute, it's up to you. And dash q training GPU and then dash a fs 2022 and then JavaScript. Or if you wanna use interactive job mode, uh, you can just add q sub dash i after, after q sub, right? And then you can use the same thing without the JavaScript. So this is a quick, uh, command line to get the Theta GPU node or a single GPU from Theta. And again, 
Uh, if you click this one, we have a user guide uh, with more details, so you can uh, check it. The last one is uh, ASF Cooley, so we are almost done. ASF, ASF Cooley is uh, for visualization uh, and also for some, uh, some simulation, all right? And it has, it, it has uh, Intel Haswell processor and two Haswell processor and one NVIDIA K80 GPU. So uh, if you use a Theta GPU, in my opinion, you may not use the Cooley, but depending on your workload, you may be interested in using the Cooley system. So Cooley has also interesting uh, environments. So it doesn't have module. It's pretty old, uh, the crazy system. Uh, instead, it used uh, the soft key, okay? So it, if, you, if you type the module list, uh, Cooley won't show you anything. So instead, you need to update your soft Cooley. So uh, on, your login, uh, on your login node on Cooley, you will have uh, .soft.cooley. If you don't have, you can create that. And then this is my uh, recommendation, okay? So, uh, in this file, you can add plus openmpi-2.1.5-intel. You will load your uh, MPI with Intel compiler. And the next one is Intel compiler. So intel-composer-xe. And if you want to use uh, GPU programming, you will need to use, add uh, the CUDA, right? So uh, in order to check, instead of uh, module avail, you will need to type the soft EMB, and then you will see all the available uh, uh, environment, and you can, you can pick it up. So this is again the JavaScript. It's very similar, right? So uh, again, this is also, it's not a, uh, it is a Cray CCC system, but it's not really a large scale Cray system. So we don't use app run in this case. Instead, we can use uh, MPI run. And Cooley system, we have uh, reservations. So QSub, dash N, dash T, and then dash Q training. Training, training is uh, the Q name with your reservation. So you can use training, right? So we have three system but all of them have a different Q name, right? It's, it may be confusing. So uh, Ray, uh, Ray mentioned on your uh, agenda page on the top, there is a, a machine reservation link, right? So if you check that, you can, if you, if you are confusing, <laughs> you can check over there and choose the correct, uh, find, uh, correct uh, Q name. Uh, so on the hands-on, uh, we have uh, the example right here. It's a grand project at PASS 2022. An example, and then you can find the track zero getting started and getting started folder. So under this folder, I have a very simple uh, example. Just to try it out to build and run it, right? So uh, we will use it for our hands-on. And this is another online document. Uh, so if you go to support center at the ASF web page, you will see a uh, well-organized uh, user guide for Theta, Theta GPU, and Cooley. And also, uh, we have a uh, nice get started presentation presented in 2019 uh, workshop, and also, again, the debugging uh, session presented by Ray uh, in 2020. So, okay. <laughs> Another thing is uh, you need to use a crypto card or some mobile app, right? So I use crypto card, but probably the uh, procedures are same. So, uh, if you use a crypto card, it has a display value, which is hex, hex string. And you, uh, once you uh, log in, uh, request your PIN, you need to type your PIN and followed by uh, your, your uh, hex string, right? And if you fail, sometimes it fail because you just typed wrong or something happened, right? And uh, in that case, uh, you can just try again <coughs> with the same crypto type of string, right? Possibly, maybe you just type wrong, right? Uh, but don't try too much. If you try too much, um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, if you fail, if, if, if you keep failing uh, login, uh, you may try some other logins. For example, if you try the theta and you fail twice, right? And then you may try Cooley or Cooley, right? Because something going on, right? So if you have some issue, you can reach out to help desk. And if, yeah, we hope you, 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 you will be patient if you fail, right? So don't try too much, okay? Just take time and try after a minute. Otherwise, uh, if you fail too much, your account will be locked, right? So that means uh, you, can type, you can keep type the password correctly, but a system will refuse to, to, to uh, you get it in, right? So 
In that case, uh, you can uh, you reach out to help desk and then we can unlock your account. Or sometimes if you fail too much from your space, your given IP, your IP may be blocked. Yeah, it may happen. So in that case, if you, if you do the SSH, uh, your uh, web browser or your, your terminal will be, will be time out, right? So if you have this symptom, you can reach out to help desk and then uh, unlock your IP address or unlock your account. So it's not a big deal, right? But if, if it happens in the midnight, maybe you need to wait by next morning. Uh, okay, again, so this is kind of cheat sheet, okay? You can check the machine reservation page, or you may just uh, keep this page for your uh, reference, uh, for uh, your reservation. So uh, ARCF system, the Theta, Theta GPU, and Cooley system. The project name is FS 2022. And then you need to use your ASF username. And again, uh, we have a support Slack and also support uh, email, right? So it may, I believe the Slack channel will be faster because uh, uh, our staff uh, keep watching this uh, Slack channel for this during that task. Uh, and in order to check the reservation, what kind of reservation is active or what kind of reservation will be, will be active soon, you need to use the show rest uh, comment. So I will show you uh, soon. And the queue name is confusing, but yeah, just uh, this uh, green, uh, green color shows uh, two names. So Theta System FS22 is queue name with your reservation. And Theta GPU training dash Q is reservation for the full node. And uh, you can use single GPU Q uh, to get the one GPU. And training, uh, the Cooley training is a Q name for uh, Cooley reservation. Uh, Ascent, uh, Ascent is also available, uh, but uh, uh, we don't have the details here, but you can find out the details uh, on the user guide and in this link, and also tools to learn how to use JS launch and a quick start guide and step, uh, step viewer. And also, uh, OSF has very nice, very structured uh, tutorials at this link, at GitHub repository, you can check it out. And if you have any system uh, with OSF system, you can check it with our help desk uh, Slack, or you can directly send email to OSF help desk. Another resource from the NERSC is Perlmutter, which is a very similar uh, architecture as uh, Polaris. Uh, it has uh, more than 1,500 GPU accelerated nodes. Each node has this uh, AMD Milan processor plus four NVIDIA 100 GPU. And Perlmutter also has uh, the CPU partition, which is uh, more than 3,000 AMD Milan CPU nodes, which uh, each node has two Milan processor. So this is very nice uh, heterogeneous system. And uh, you can find more details in this reference. And again, uh, we have uh, we plan to use a cloud resource for tools track uh, next Wednesday. So NVIDIA, so actually you can use NVIDIA tools on our Theta GPU or Cooley system, right? You can keep using that. But uh, for some reason, NVIDIA tool speaker prefer to use their cloud system. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you wanna use, if you wanna try the NVIDIA cloud GPU resource, uh, you need to uh, create the NVIDIA developer account in, in here. This is free, so you can just create, create one. And uh, on the day of the tools track, the NVIDIA speaker will share the screen uh, for the landing page URL and with uh, the access code. So with that access code, you will be able to use uh, the reservations set on, uh, established on the NVIDIA cloud GPU system, right? So if you wanna try it out, you can try it out. Or if you, if you wanna try a data GPU or Cooley system or uh, Ascent or Permutter, right? So all of them are a NVIDIA GPU system, so you can try it that resource as well. Uh, Intel Dev Cloud will be used for uh, tools track, I mean, for NVIDIA, Intel GPU resource, because we don't have publicly available Intel GPU yet. We will have soon with Aurora, but we don't have it yet. So, uh, so Intel speaker will use Intel Dev Cloud, so we, don't, we are still setting up the uh, reservation, so we will uh, update you once we have that reservation. And the AMD Acceler Accelerator is Cloud, AAC, again, uh, Frontier use AMD GPU, but we don't have it yet. I mean, in publicly yet. So uh, AMD speaker also wanna use uh, AAC system uh, for tools track. So we are setting up the reservation, so we will update you later, okay? Okay, so any question? So if you, if you, if you have used uh, those system, this is kind of piece of cake, right? You can maybe take a quick nap. 
but otherwise uh, it may be useful. I hope it is, it is useful for you. So uh, please use this presentation as a reference uh, for during the task. And uh, uh, if you have any question, you can reach out to me uh, through the Slack or help task. So I'm not a uh, director of task, so I won't get the email from 150. So I may be quicker than Ray. So you can reach out to me.